need one dog team for a road sweep and surrounding area check. Levy! Dog up! I just don't know why you want to do this. Yeah, I know you don't. You don't really connect with people very well. Just so you know, running away isn't going to solve anything. Hang up that phone! Tuck your shirt in! Found something! Good boy. I've been watching this dog all year. He's the most aggressive dog I've ever treated. Does he really need another break? It's not like he hasn't earned it. You're getting a dog. You got this? Think faster. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> you think I'm afraid of you? Lay down. Rex, lay down. Vehicle approaching. Guns up. <laughs> Why'd you join? To get away from my life. We're shipping out tomorrow. We are so not ready for this. Clear! Levy, check the vehicle! Okay. Where's my dog? I need to see him. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -huh. You cannot come back to my house like some big war hero. Back off, Listen, Mom! You can't let your whole life fall apart over some dog. That dog saved my life. We the fire. Please just change his classification so that I can adopt him when he gets back. They aren't pets. They're warriors. Just have a moment of your time. His name is Rex. He saved thousands of lives in Iraq. What did you say your name was? Corporal Megan Levy. All you gotta do is fight. And you know how to fight. <laughs> You're a Marine. What would you say to Rex if he were here? I'd thank him for teaching me what love is. Is there a way Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having Congratulations me. Congratulations on the movie. Thanks. Can I say, I, 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 I'm a cynical person. So I went into this movie cynically. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's based on a true story and it's extremely emotional. And I went into it being like a, a, a dog movie, okay. But you and your director do an amazing job of grounding this movie in a way that I don't think most people would have done. You don't talk to the dog in a cute way. There's no cutaways to the dog looking back at you and doing like a hooch thing, you know? And be like, Arr. it's all very grounded in, in, in real emotion. And I, when the movie was over, I was just as moved as I think anybody else will be when they see this movie. Congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate that. One, one of the things that we, Gabriella, our, my director, and I really focused on, um, especially after reading the script, because there are those scenes written where Megan talks to the dog, and as an actor, you read that and you kind of go, um, oh, uh, um, I don't want to talk to a do dog. That sounds cheesy. So we worked on finding a way of making it seem natural, because let's be honest, like if you have animals at home, you talk to them, I talk to mine all the time. Um, and it's it's just normal conversation. I talk to strangers' animals when I walk yeah. by them on the show, I'll be like, hey dog. Yeah, we're all much <laughs> more friendly to strangers' animals than we are to strangers. But there's something about it in a movie where, you know, because it's been done so many times and right. done a certain way so many times, you expect that, but you found, you found something here that is, actually how people talk to animals. Right. Well, I'm, I'm relieved to hear that because it was definitely something we were conscious of. And, um, you know, we really kind of worked on making it seem as natural as possible. And how, how much do you think of that, that came from working with a documentary filmmaker? Someone who, this is her, for her first narrative film, right? She, yeah. came, she made a Blackfish, right? She made Blackfish, which um, if you haven't seen it, you, ha you have to see it. I, the first time I watched it, I, um, I was so moved by it. It really changed my life in a lot of ways. I um, reached out to Gabriella um, and her team and, and asked if I, if I could be involved in any way in helping her, um, you know, get the story out there or help with the orcas and, and um, in her mission. And 
we became friends really through that. And I was so excited to see what she was going to do next. Um, and I knew you she- You were friends before she yeah. started directing you. How important did you find that to be when you were doing something as vulnerable as we said, not to stick to this, but mm. as talking to the dog, working specifically with the dog, having a director that you're already friends with that you know you have a shared sensibility with? Well, I've never experienced that before. I've never been um, you know, friends with a director before actually working with them before. So, um, for this, it was, I found it to be incredibly helpful and unique because I already trust, you know, I trusted her. I trusted her taste. Um, we've, we've talked endlessly over dinners and things about what kinds of movies we like, what kinds of actors we like. So I knew that we were going to have a similar, you know, aesthetic and just, just taste when it comes to, the performance or or things like that so I was just very trusting of her right away what was your take on on the story going into it as an actress I mean did you did you meet Megan did you talk to her and did you what was your your thoughts going into it well you know the for me the most exciting thing right away when reading the script is um you know the fact that it's rare you get sent scripts about females in the military yeah. very rare um and it was my first time getting sent that that kind of story. Um, I've always wanted to play a female Marine. I think Marines are, you know, just incredibly impressive. And um, I was just, I've always been curious about that world. Um, so when Any I- Any boot camp? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a version of boot camp, um, which is obviously very different than the real boot camp. Um, but I had, I had, you know, actual Marines and I had all kinds of experts surrounding me at all times, you know, telling me what um, what I was doing, if it was right or wrong. Um, we trained for a while before we started shooting. I did not just physical training. I mean, that's the obvious stuff. Um, but the, the hardest part of the training was the, the training with the dog because I had no experience in that. He actually, Varco was the dog's name. He, it was his first movie. And he had zero. <laughs> very nervous. Varko was very nervous going into this. This is his debut. Um, Rolled in with a posse on the first day. We were like, "This is your little dude." <laughs> yeah, he had a lot of you know people around him at all times. Um, but also, he had no experience. You know, I kind of for some reason assumed that we would get uh, an experience or an ex ward dog or of some kind. Um, and so it made me nervous. But then we trained together, so I think that kind of bonded us quicker. Did that help in the in the in the scenes with the dog? Yeah, it definitely helped. Um, you know, we spent a few weeks together learning, you know, just really everything we needed to know about what happens when you go on a mission. Um, and so by the time we actually started shooting, um, we kind of had a, a mutual respect and trust of each other that is vital. I mean, you can't fake that with an animal. They either trust you or they don't. I'm curious, you said that you and uh, and the director, Gabriella, excuse me, uh, had lots of conversations beforehand about movies that you like and what you wanted to bring to this, and, and what were some of those movies and actors and actresses? Um, I, I'd have to think more um, remembering, like, specific people and things like that, but the vibe of the films that we like is always super raw and gritty and nothing cutesy, which everyone kind of assumes that if there's a movie about a dog, it's going to be kind of, you know, jolly, um, which I, you know, it, that's, that's okay. That works for a lot of things, but this film specifically in this story specifically, I think, um, that just doesn't make sense for what, you know, this story is. So, um, I felt safe in that she wasn't, you know, that wasn't what she was going for either. She wanted it to feel as authentic as possible. And I think the fact that she comes from the documentary world, that only catered to, you know, the sort of raw, um, visually speaking as well, uh, feel that the movie has a lot of the time. And I, I think one of the smart things that they do with with the dog, Rex, what's the, the, uh, the dog actor's name again? Varco. Varco, is they kind of cast the dog that's not wildly expressive which is an interesting take on doing this story because then you suddenly start getting those cute shots whether you want them or not. So obviously it's a wonderful dog, but it's not a dog that is immediately giving off an, a, an obvious expression consistently. You think he's quite stoic? Very stoic yeah. dog. <laughs> very, very, an actor's workshop dog, just right. totally stoic, yeah. 
the, the character Megan herself, I'm not sure if she was if she was like this uh, as a real person, but the arc of her going from someone who isn't really grounded in reality, doesn't have much to hold on to, hasn't really experienced connection through most of her life, which ends up makes her sort of join the military or the Marines and now finds connection in this dog is such an, an incredible arc. Were you nervous going into this at all? Um, I was definitely aware that, um, you know, I think I'm always kind of nervous going into a new, um, taking on a new film and a new role. But when you're playing someone, um, who is real and alive and also, involved to a certain extent with the film already. So you did work with her beforehand? We, yeah, we, I mean, I don't really like to say we worked together because it was more, like it was a personal thing. We, we just hung out um, and she showed me pictures of, of basically the story in general, but also just talked about life and we watched football together. It was not like, you know, we're gonna sit down. We actually did. We ate pizza and watched. You're a football. big football fan. I am, and she's a huge, she's a huge sports fan as well. Um, but I just kind of wanted to like get to know her spirit, and um, and so then I was nervous enough meeting her. She's a Marine, which is intimidating. <laughs> like that is intimidating. Um, and then of course you want them to be proud of the performance you're giving. So she was on set not every day, but she was there enough. But I never felt, um, once she was actually there and I knew her, I always kind of felt like she was my teammate, like she had my back and um, I just felt incredible support from her. So it was lucky. Oftentimes movies that are based on a real person are based on people who have a sort of cultural significance or at least, they, significance is the wrong word, excuse me. I mean, something that, uh, not, uh, they're iconic in some way and everybody knows their mannerisms and how they act, but because Megan isn't necessarily that, did you feel like you needed to model your performance off of exactly who she was or just sort of take inspiration and, and, and create a different Megan Levy? I didn't feel like I had to sort of do, uh, you know, I didn't need to match her voice per se, but luckily we're both from New York. We have similar, you know, it, we had enough similarities that it wasn't um, this grand transformation for me and for Gabriella. It was more important that we get her, just her essence and, and what she's all about, her spirit really. So when I did, you know, spend time with her before shooting, um, that to me was what I really wanted to capture. Now this movie really covers the, uh, a wide range of the experience for a Marine, which is boot camp, uh, you know, actually serve, uh, being overseas and actually serving in Iraq. And then afterwards, a kind of PTSD feeling that can come with not feeling connected to the world that you've come back to. What kind of research did you do for, for those parts of the film? Um, I, that, that to us was a very, um, it was a very important part of the film. We were just as concerned um, and wanted to be just as careful with the scenes um, post-war as we were with the actual war scenes because, um, you know, that subject matter is very, um, it's a very tricky thing to deal with. And, and um, I actually had made a film a couple years before where I played the wife of a Marine who's struggling from PTSD, uh, Man Down. Yeah, yeah, with the Shia LaBeouf. The Shia LaBeouf. With, uh, directed by... Uh, Ditto. He, Ditto, yeah. yeah. Um, he's great, yeah. But so that was kind of my introduction into, the, into that world, and I learned a little bit about it then. Um, so that was, that was kind of actually when I, I became super curious and inspired by... Um, w trying to find a, a story about a female Marine um, because I realized, oh, this is rarely happens. You rarely find those stories, and there are countless. Um, anyway, the PTSD stuff was really important to us to get right, and um, I was quite nervous about um, screenings that I heard were happening with ex-military or military because I wanted to make sure that they had a nice response to it and that it felt real to them and authentic to them and that it wasn't, we weren't taking it too far, but we showed enough. That's still so hard too because PTSD is such an individualized experience and so often I think we culturally categorize it as one kind of experience for anybody who comes home, but it takes many different forms for people. Absolutely, and not only that, and one of the things that I love about the movie is that it... It, it opens the conversation to, you know, animals experience PTSD as well. That's not something I had really considered, um, 
But of course that happens. I mean, they're experiencing trauma um, just like the humans are. So um, I thought that was an interesting thing to bring to light. Bring to light, explore, and then also how do you explore that in a way that, you know, I mean, it's it's a testament to Gabriella's filmmaking and your performance that you are able to explore that without it coming off any certain way. It's a tight rope to walk, really. It is, so I appreciate appreciate, <laughs> appreciate the compliment. I, I wonder if, that, if, if stuff like that made you nervous while you were shooting it. Oh, yeah, but that's when I think uh, things like that, that's when trusting the director that you're working with um, really comes in handy because... You know, I would just, I would just say, is, is this too, is this too much? Is it enough? Do you understand what I'm doing? Like, is it making any sense? Um, you kind of just have to put all of your faith in the person that is, you know, creating the film. Um, and and so I did with Gabriella. Now, making a film about uh, a female marine, uh, one of the things about the film is that yes, she is a female marine. It is talked about, but it isn't dwelled upon. It isn't really, it isn't heavy-handed in any way. Did you find that that was kind of the greatest compliment to female Marines that you could pay? Because so many female Marines, they want to be known as Marines. Absolutely. I think the way we handled the movie is the way Megan Levy handles herself. She never, in talking about her experience, she never focuses on that. A Marine is a Marine, and some are female, some are male. She doesn't focus on that part, so we wanted to make sure, of course, there are little moments here and there where you go, oh, right, okay, so that's what it's like when you're the one of the only girls there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really liked, I thought that was a tasteful way of, of you know, tipping the hat to the experience of a female in the Marine Corps, but not focusing on that. Talk about your supporting cast. Edie Falco is in the film, and I'm a big Edie Falco fan. Love her. Yeah, Edie is incredible. I, we just constantly wanted more of her, and um, you know, we only had so much for her to do in the film, but Gabriella and I were just, um, we felt very lucky that she, um, that she was on board and she brings so much to the smallest details and, um, constantly is just, you know, coming up with great ideas and little one-liners here and there. I mean, all of, all of, basically all of Edie's great moments are just her, um, you know, improv -ing. Yeah. How early did you get involved in the film? Was the script already written when you had gotten involved? Or was it like a project, like an idea in development that you were like, this is something I want to attach myself to and work on and work with No, this it was, um, I had worked with the producers, um, I think it was like 10 years before on a, on a TV show called Jack and Bobby. Um, and was it about Jack? Was it about Jack <laughs> yes. Kennedy? And, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, this was a very long time ago. But uh, we would work together then really hadn't seen them really since very much and they had sent they just sent me the script saying we don't have a director yet but we want you to be our our Megan and I read it and instantly said yes and so that's when I thought this would be a great thing for Gabriella to direct if everybody agrees and and she agrees um and so luckily everybody did Speaking of the Kennedys, you are you have a movie that you're that you've wrapped or you're shooting where you play Mary Jo, the yeah. campaign advisor that Ted Kennedy drove into a ditch, right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is such an awful description. But I, I mean, um, my uh, apology. <laughs> no, uh, it, yes, I we finished it. I think. I'm really sorry. You are much closer to this historical moment no. than I think most people. No, no, no. Think. That that's okay. Yeah, it's a it's a it is a very very honestly. Um, traumatic, um, awful thing that actually happened. Um, <laughs> and it was a really traumatic um, shoot as well because it's not easy what the actual, what actually happened. Um, there was a lot of underwater filming and all sorts of things being stuck in a car, which is, uh, you know, unlike anything I've ever experienced. But um, I think it'll be coming out in the fall. So I'm excited about that. Jason Clark plays Ted Kennedy and he was so incredible to watch. Allow me to apologize one more time for my glib, my well, glib, yeah, my glib recount of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay, forgive me. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Uh, who's got a microphone? Hi. Right there. Hello. Hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, cool hat. Thank you. Um, my brother is actually a United States Marine. He's in Iraq right now. Um, 
And he was recently deployed, so I'm learning so much about the military, and I'm really supportive of films being made, trying to honor these people and their stories. But my question for you, uh, mental health, obviously you were talking about PTSD, and that's something I'm trying to you know, train myself on because my brother will be coming back, and it's a big fear of mine. So how did you mentally prepare for this role, and were there any challenges while filming? Well, it's kind of hard to describe how you mentally prepare for anything emotional I, I think like as an actor the physical stuff is obvious how you prepare for that um but I have to say the hardest the hardest part of about making this movie was the emotional aspect of it um you know the scenes in the film where specifically we're in a therapy session that was one of the hardest scenes to shoot um I, I don't even know how to how to describe how you sort of try and put your um head on right and think about, oh, well, how would I actually be if I was experiencing this thing that I've never actually experienced? It's um, it's just part of acting that is hard to put into words, but um, it was definitely the most challenging part about making this movie, for sure. Next question. Hi. Hi. Um, so you mentioned it was the dog's big debut and also that it didn't really have much military training. So what was it like to work with that dog? And like, what was some of, like, did you build a relationship with it on set? Yeah, he, he had zero military um, training, um, but he was uh, the fastest learner. I mean, he was a much faster learner than I was. Um, <laughs> and, and he also would do, usually his best work was on the first or second take. So one of the challenges, but for me, it was a joy, is that the crew and everyone on set, including me, had to totally be prepared from the first take. So it wasn't like, oh, we'll get it right on the fifth take. No, Varco is gonna give us something incredible that's probably not written and much more interesting than what we're hoping for on the first or second take. So we'd all sort of just be ready for anything. And as an actor, that's a complete joy because you're actually responding um, in the moment. And it's not, you know, you're not thinking of it ahead of time. We have no idea what he's gonna do. So I love, I mean, I loved working with an animal. I think we have time for one more question. Right here. Hi. Uh, I actually got a chance to see the film last week, and I thought your performance was phenomenal. Um, and I was wondering, what war movies did you have to watch, uh, or did you watch in preparation for Megan Levy? And also, in, as a fellow New Yorker, in context, in context to the movie, Mets or Yankees? <laughs> You're more of a football fan, right? I am, but I love all sports. I, I am... I am now definitely a Yankee. I would say before I am. Whoa, those are fighting words. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm I'm Boston, so. Well, then we're definitely not going to be friends. Um, <laughs> um, as far as the as far as the uh, which movies I watched, sort of to prepare, I've I'd seen all you know all of Catherine Bigelow's films are incredible to me and um, very inspirational. Um, weirdly, I even though our film is nothing like this, um, G.I. Jane was on the night before we started shooting. It was on TV, and I I my I was just like, oh, this is a sign. This is perfect. It's the perfect thing for me to watch um, and be inspired by. Um, so watch and go. I can do better than this. <laughs> not even close. To Demi Moore doing the one-handed push. I was like, well, I clearly need to get to the gym like now. Um, but yeah, that was just like a funny thing that happened the night before we started shooting. Okay, uh, the film is wonderful. Congratulations. Uh, when can people see it? Uh, June 9th. June 9th. It comes out this Friday. Okay, Mara, everybody. Okay, Thank thanks you so guys. much. Thank you so much.